Hello, well, still staying at home. <laughs> I, I, it looks like that there's a possibility that that is going to be lifted, that ban on staying at home uh, here in Kansas. I know that other places have already lifted it and some never did even put it in place. All that I can figure out is that they just don't have the wonderful people to stay at home with like we do here in Kansas. I don't know. <laughs> it could be, I don't know. But you know, staying at home is not going to eliminate the worries. Uh, it, it's 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 an advancement and, and it's good news and, and and we say okay but what's it gonna look like how, how our business is gonna come back how are we gonna stay safe how, we know that the virus is not gone and so the worries kind of continue in, in some ways they could even build we had kind of a sense of a net of safety here we're all trying to stay home we're all trying well now what if we if well, what if we don't and there's always going to be something to worry about isn't there and yet Jesus here in Matthew, in his Sermon on the Mount, he clearly says, I tell you, do not worry about your life, verse 25 of chapter 6. He thinks that we can live higher, live above our worries, and even eliminate them. Do not have them. There's a key word we talked about, therefore. So we've got to go back from Jesus, what he says here, do not worry about your life. But he says, therefore. So he said something before that leads into this so that we can have a better understanding of why he thinks we don't have to worry about our life. If we go all the way back to verse 1 of chapter 6, he shifts gears. And I think he's moving toward this idea of worry. Um, he shifts gears from saying, you used to hear it was said like this, but I'm telling you these things. But then in, in verse 1 of chapter 6, he says, you've got to look at your righteousness, or we would say your religious acts. You've got to look at those things and, and get down to the root of why you are doing them. What is the purpose behind your religious acts? Because he believes that if we use the religious uh, acts um, for the purpose that, that they were intended to be, that it will even move us further down the road of eliminating worry. So what's he do? Well, he talks about giving. okay, And he talks about prayer. He talks about fasting. Maybe one we're not as familiar with, but you can throw in any. These are just examples. You can throw in praise songs. You can throw in daily devotionals. You can throw in reading the Bible. You can uh, just keep going. You know, all the different kinds of religious acts of going, you know, and meeting with people and worshiping and whatever, whatever these religious acts are to you, they can all be fit under this. And what Jesus says is, you have to be careful because if you don't use them in the way that they're intended. You're going to miss the fullness of what God has in for them. You're going to miss the rewards that God has. And they're all connected to this one idea, relationship. Relationship. We don't give to boast at how religious we are. You know? No, we, we give because God is a giver. And, and so we, in a sense, secretly give. We, we don't have to have any recognition of it you know, because we know who God is and so therefore we can we can give he, he says prayer we're not trying to get God's attention we're, we're, we're not trying to do something that that makes us look good as religiously no we go into the closet into that secret place why to commune with God to, to be in a relationship with him and and the same with fasting or any of them any religious acts the purpose behind them is to put ourselves in a position to open ourselves up to God, to come closer to, to God, it, to build our relationship with God. And Jesus, when he says, therefore, that's one of the things he's talking about. How are we using the religious acts that we use? Do we see them as the end in themselves? In other words, well, he told me to pray, so I pray. He told me to give. I have to give. I have to give 10%. And then we just see it as a, as a legalistic checklist. Okay, I did this religious. And now we believe that God is, is kind of happy with this, more appeased. And I, no, those are not the reasons for the, for the religious acts that we involve ourselves in. There's a whole lot more we could say about what Jesus is, is talking in here in, in, in the first part of chapter 6. What we're looking at right here, right now, is just to ask ourselves, how do I use the religious acts? Am I using them to build relationship with God, to move into a closer relationship with God, 
Jesus believes that if we will use them that way, that we will move further down the road of eliminating